In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up Samsung Galaxy Watch 7. Now I'm going to be using a Samsung phone, but I'm also going to do a video using a Pixel phone. So if you have a Pixel phone, you might want to go check out that video. I'll link it in the description below. Otherwise, we're going to go continue here. And the first thing you want to do is turn on your Galaxy Watch. So to do that, you're going to find the button that has kind of an orange outline on the bottom. And we're gonna press and hold on that button for a few seconds until the Samsung logo appears. So I'm holding still, I felt a little vibration, there's a Samsung logo. I'm gonna put that down to the side while it goes through its little startup process. And over here on the phone, what you wanna do is you wanna find the Play Store. Now I'm gonna use the Google Play Store. It looks like this. You can also swipe up to reveal all of your apps and the the Play Store app is here, so you can also type here to search for it if you still can't find it. So I'm gonna go ahead and tap on Play Store. And over here on the watch, it's saying welcome. And it is Galaxy Watch 7. And it says, you'll see a pop-up on your phone to help you connect. Let's see if that comes up. If you don't see it, try connecting in your phone's Galaxy Wearable app or Bluetooth settings. So it doesn't seem to be popping up here at the moment. You can also tap here for language, help, or accessibility options if you need any of those. So it's kind of sad that the little pop-up's not working, but that's okay if it doesn't work for you as well. We'll go back to what I was doing. So I'm gonna go back to the Play Store app and I'm gonna tap here on the search bar. And I'm gonna type in Galaxy Wearable. And then I'm gonna press search. And this is what the official Galaxy Wearable app by Samsung logo looks like. Uh, as you can see here, I already have it installed. If you don't already have it installed, go ahead and install it. Um, and then go ahead and press whatever's here. For me, it's open, so I'll just do that. And if you haven't installed it before, you probably will need to create a Samsung account. So you'll need to go through those steps first before um, moving on here. But if you're upgrading from a previous device or you just for some reason already have this app, you can just start by tapping on the three horizontal lines here. And as you can see, I have four other Galaxy watches uh, paired to this phones. But what I need to do next is tap here on the plus add new device. So it's scanning for devices to add. And if you do have other Bluetooth devices in the vicinity, it might take a little while. So let's see if it can find it. All right, so it says pick your device. And for what happened to me is I actually had to scroll down to available devices. And once you see Galaxy Watch 7 in the list, go ahead and tap here. Now we're checking the number of watch. It is the same, so I'll tap confirm. And now it says downloading software. And on the watch it says check your phone to complete setup. So it is going through this increasing percentage progress and we just got to 100. All right, so now we have to review some permissions. And it looks like there are some optional options here. So you definitely have to agree to the terms and conditions, the Galaxy Wearable Privacy Notice. And if you wanna read any of those, you just can tap here on the details and then scroll through and read as you wish. So I'll go ahead and tap here to agree to those. You can also optionally agree to sending diagnostic data and you agree to automatic updates for the Galaxy Watch 7. I'll go ahead and uh, leave automatic updates on because for testing, I want to make sure I'm using the most recent versions. But if you don't want that on, you can just uncheck it there. It is optional. Or you can just tap once and agree to everything. So I'm going to go ahead and make those selections and then I'm going to tap continue. So that's saying allow Galaxy Watch 7 manager to access Galaxy Watch 7. So all of this is uh, necessary. So if you want to use your watch, uh, go ahead and tap allow. And if you want it to send you notifications, you can allow or don't allow. I don't think this is necessary, but I'm gonna go ahead and allow. And I guess I might need to tap continue again. Okay. So now it says it's getting ready to connect. All right, now it says getting Google account info. 
All right, now it says sign in to your Google account. So if you have the account you want to use, it pops up here. All you have to do is tap next. If you don't want to have your Google account associated with this, you won't be able to use things like Google Assistant or some other Google features, you can tap skip. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and tap next. And I need to use my fingerprint to agree. And now it's signing into my Google account. And again, this could take about a minute. All right, now we have some Google Terms of Service to agree to. And it looks like these might be optional. So if you don't want to agree to sending usage and diagnostic reports, you can uncheck this. And location would be required if you want to do things like uh, GPS. Uh, and weather is another one that would need to use location. Um, if you don't want to agree to this, you can uncheck it. And you, I'm sure it will pop up if you try to use a feature that needs location. So in the meantime, I guess I'll just keep that unchecked. And I'll go ahead, you can either decline or agree, but I'm pretty sure in order to use it with your Google account, you need to agree. So I'll go ahead and say, I agree. All right, now it says automatic watch backup. Your watch data and files will be backed up periodically when your watch is connected to your phone. So I'm just gonna tap next. It says Smart Switch uses these permissions, so that's what the automatic backup is called, Smart Switch. And if you do not want to have an automatic backup, you can deny here. And I'm gonna go ahead and tap Allow. Now it says it's checking for Smart Switch on my watch. All right, so it's saying Smart Switch on watch uses these permissions. And if you want to allow it again, I guess I have to tap Allow again. All right, so it's saying I can restore a backup. I can choose backup from the list below or set this watch as a new watch. So I think I'm actually going to say set up as a new watch and we'll see what happens. Actually, let's just say restore. <laughs> so if you wanna see what it's like if you just set up your watch as a new watch, you can check out my Galaxy Watch FE setup video because I did not enable smart switch on that one. All right, so if you are restoring your watch from a previous watch backup, you'll get this screen where it's saying it's restoring apps and permissions, music, images, home screen, watch faces, and settings. And it'll go through each one of these and show you, it looks like we have an overall progress bar, and then it's already completed these three and it still has these three to go. And I'm not sure, it doesn't seem like it's doing anything at the moment, but I'm sure it's, doing something in the background. So we will be patient and keep watching. All right, so there we go. Now it's restored my watch faces and it's working on restoring the settings. <laughs> and it knows my setting was to flip the screen here. So it definitely did work. So I'll go ahead and tap next because all my data has been restored. And just for the purposes of this um, I guess I'll just flip this like that then. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna keep these the same. You can uh, change your preferred wrist and button position and that'll let Samsung know which direction to flip the display. So that's definitely useful. So make your selections here. You can tap and choose something different and then tap next when you're done. And it says you can create custom workout routines. I'm not gonna do this at the moment, so I'll go ahead and tap next. You can check your ba body's battery level. Okay, next. This is just going over some features. I do recommend um, tapping here on advanced measurement if you wanna do sleep tracking. So would you like to have blood oxygen during sleep? Snore detection, which requires a microphone, as well as skin temperature during sleep. And I have personally turned off blood oxygen because I didn't find it super useful. And I was trying to maybe save some battery. I think I might do the same with skin temperature. And I'm gonna make those selections and then tap continue. Uh, it says you can find out if you're at risk for sleep apnea. That's probably only if you have the blood oxygen sensor turned on. Okay, so I'm gonna tap next. You can double pinch to control your watch. You can pinch twice to answer calls, dismiss alerts, play or pause music, or take a photo when the camera app is open. So that seems to be a new feature this year. 
You can also get help in an emergency by pressing the home button five times to call emergency services. You can also turn on hard fall detection to automatically call emergency services if you have a hard fall. Okay, I'll go ahead and tap next. And now it says it is finishing up. Looks like it's going pretty quickly. You can tap here for a tips and user guide while you're waiting, but here we go on both the watch and the phone. It says I'm all set. And there we go, Kelsey's Watch 7. Looks like it came with 73% battery. And we have a little bit different look here for the Watch 7. It says it is starting over here on the display. All right, so now it says you can take a tour of your watch. I'm actually going to skip this for now. I did this on the Galaxy Watch FE video if you wanna see it. But I'll go ahead and say skip to save some time. All right, and it's going to a weird clock face. That was not my clock face. Let's see if I can change it here. I'll press and hold. Huh. So I did not get my watch face. That might be because I have a paid watch face. Looks like these are the new ones. I'll say Ultra Info Board. Let's just have the default one there. All right, so now we can do things like swipe down and access the quick panel, go to our settings here and things like that. You can swipe up to access your apps and you can swipe from left to right to get to your notifications and you can either swipe from right to left to get to your tiles or you can use the touch bezel function and just kind of drag your finger along the side of the screen. So that is how you pair your Samsung Galaxy Watch 7 to your phone. If you have any other questions about how to use your Galaxy Watch 7, let me know in the comments below and maybe I can make a video to help you out. Otherwise, if you found this video helpful, could you please give it a thumbs up down below and consider subscribing if you wanna see more Galaxy Watch 7 videos.